Hello, I'm Octavius Obe, and welcome. I am pleased to be talking to Dr. Elwood Dunn under the auspices of the Liberia Community Association of Greater Charlotte here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Dr. Dunn went to Basel High School in Buchanan and Cuttington University before obtaining his PhD degree from American University in 1972. Uh, he was Minister of State for Presidential Affairs under President Talbert before joining the Faculty of Politics at the University of the South in Sawani, Tennessee, where he worked for 31 years uh, in the process of becoming chair of the Department of Politics and also the uh, Alfred Walter Nagley Professor of Politics at that school as well. From 1985 to 1995, Dr. Don was editor of the Liberia Studies Journal. Uh, he has authored or co-authored more than 25 books and articles about Liberia. But today our conversation uh, looks at the role that Liberia played in the liberation of Africa. Well, I think the first thing to say is that uh, President Talbot was the current chairman of the Organization of African Unity, having been elected at the 16th summit that took place in Monrovia mm -hmm. in 1979. So it is in that capacity that he sent to London at the Lancaster House Conference, mm -hmm. uh, Deputy Foreign Minister TCFI Sherman as his personal representative, simply to facilitate the discussion. In other words, uh, you know, it was a discussion uh, between the British government and the various representatives of Zimbabwe, and I say furious because it was not only Mr. Mugabe, it was Mr. Nkomo and, and others. So uh, he then showed up himself at one point uh, at the meeting and held talks with all of the players, the British representatives and Mr. Mugabe, Mr. Nkomo and others. Uh, so it was uh, a role of um, encouraging, facilitating, uh, trying to ensure that the outcome would be a peaceful outcome that would lead to the independence of Zimbabwe. But there's a long background to this that one has to keep in mind. And I say a long background largely because Liberia has been or had been involved in this uh, effort at trying to promote liberation in Africa since the Tubman administration. Mm -hmm. So there's that background you want to keep in mind. Okay, and and then specifically, you led the delegation to uh, to Zimbabwe. Yes, but it was a different kind of delegation to Zimbabwe. In other words, uh, what I went to Zimbabwe to do was largely to formally establish contact with Mr. Mugabe, who had been elected as the Prime Minister of the then coming to be independent Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe had not yet become independent. I think it was slated to become independent on the 18th or 19th of April of 1980. So uh, as the current chairman of the OAU, uh, President Talbot was supposed to attend the independence ceremonies. And before he went, he sent me as a special envoy to in effect prepare the way um, make contact with the authorities in Zimbabwe and um, uh, otherwise prepare for his delegation. And how did that uh, visit go? Well, it went well. We did what we needed to do. I, I met with Mr. Mugabe several times. I met with some of his other officials as well. And uh, then we talked with the protocol people at their foreign ministry about accommodation and so forth. And we had done all that we needed to do. And we had gotten on the plane and uh, headed for Nairobi on our way back home. While we were in Nairobi waiting for our plane, that's when the news came that uh, President Talbot had been assassinated and the Liberian government uh, overthrown. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm going to come back to that, but I want to stay on the, the issue of the Liberia's role in the liberation of the continent just a little bit more. Uh, I know we were involved in the formation of the, of the OEU, uh, the San Nicola Conference, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, there was a time there when a lot of the 
exiles from South Africa, so to speak, came to Liberia and lived there. Surely. Uh, and I heard, as a young man growing up in Liberia, I also heard that President Tubman uh, played a very significant role uh, in the, the, the furtherance of the objectives of the ANC mm -hmm. ANC in South Africa. Can you give yeah. us some more details on that, if, if you are aware? Surely. Uh, yes, Liberia was always um, interested in the unfolding process of decolonization in Africa in all of the areas that were still under colonial rule, including uh, Southern Africa that you are apparently specifically interested in. Um, uh, and I can say that Mr. Nelson Mandela, that name rings a bell all around, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, visited Liberia um, and met with President, President Tubman um, and the officials of the Liberian Foreign Ministry. And, you know, the whole purpose was seeking support, uh, moral and material support. And, and he got both. I mean, the moral support and the material support, meaning uh, money to facilitate his travels after he, you know, got out of South Africa in a clandestine fashion. He had to because of the apartheid regime that was uh, pursuing, pursuing a deliberation uh, strugg strugglers at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, subsequently, a number of individuals from various groups, you know, there were various groups. There was not only the African National Congress, the ANC that you mentioned, but then there was the uh, uh, Pan-Africanist Congress, uh, PAC, I think it was called. Oliver Tambo. Uh, so you, huh? No, was Oliver Tambo was with the ANC. Okay. But, but uh, there, were, there were groups that were more radical, I might say, than the ANC. I mean, uh, there were groups that uh, did not want to be accommodating, and meaning did not want necessarily a peaceful resolution. They felt that if there was need for uh, armed struggle, then one should engage in armed struggle. But uh, a lot of these individuals came to Liberia, and some resided. There was a fellow called Vuz Maquet, who uh, lived in Liberia and taught uh, at the University of Liberia uh, uh, for, for, for several years. So these individuals were in and out of the country as the need arose for them to do so. Uh, Sam Nujoma, who became the vice president of an independent Namibia, he was in and out of the country. On really? A, oh yes, on a regular basis, in and out of the country. And the Liberian uh, government officials were in contact with all of these people at the various international forums that whether it was called the United Nations or the Non-Aligned Countries Movement or the Organization of African Unity or the subgroup that was called the Liberation Committee of the Organization of African Unity, one was constantly in contact with these people and they were feeding Liberian, Liberian officials with, with detailed information about the progress that the struggle was, was, was making at that point in time. And the reason for, for my question is that within the last uh, two decades or so, uh, I am not so certain if uh, the current generation is really aware of the significant role that Liberia played in the liberation of Africa. And I, I don't know what's the reason for, for that. I don't know if it's miscommunication or just uh, our failure to impress upon the, the generation uh, that came just before us uh, or even during our time. About that role. Yeah, but something happened in Liberia, you have to keep in mind that probably explains this. And that's something that happened. It, it, there was a kind of discontinuity as a result of the coup and then the civil war that followed. So that whole period of uh, 1980 to 1989, uh -huh. and then 1989 and the 14 years of civil war was a period of tremendous upheaval, as you can imagine, as you, you know, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, and, and I think it, it affected the normal process of educating Liberians about what's happening to their country. And I think that explains in part why the generation that came after uh, knows very little about this. Many, many thanks to Dr. Don for, for doing this. Uh, thanks also to the Liberia Community Association of Greater Charlotte. Uh, Marvin Bayon is the board chair. Lucian Edwards is president. Joyce Harris is vice president. Uh, Leona 
Williams' chair of programs, uh, the publicity committee, uh, Tanya Carpe and Michelle Slower, and all other members of the publicity committee, uh, the chair of the various committees here. We have um, the program was recorded at Speedy Wireless here in Charlotte. Original music produced and recorded by Quentin, quote, the producer of it. Thanks for watching. Good night.